Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, we're going to do a little mini-series here. I've had some viewers asking, hey, can you do a more detailed build and show us like solder by solder joint and point out each connection point on this amp? And since I've already finished one channel and I've already kind of figured out how to lay things out, the second guy over here we're going to be building on video, very detailed. If you've got a short attention span or you're just kind of looking for views, this probably isn't the video for you. If you enjoy watching just kind of a slow build process with me soldering and stuff and enjoy that for relaxation, this is your video. And if you're going to build one of these, this might be helpful, especially if this is your first amp. So, without wasting a bunch of time, let's build this thing. Okay, so here's our starting point. We've got all of our components bolted down. Output transformer, power transformer with the wires that go to them. Here's our choke with the two wires. Rectifier tube. These are the two output tubes. This is our input tube phase splitter, power switch, potentiometer, RCA jacks, and here's where the speaker jacks are going to go. Now one of the things I like to do is try to get as many of these wires like attached to stuff before I start putting in tag strips and installing components and all of that kind of stuff. And one of the easy things to do first is get rid of these speaker wires. And so we stick them through these holes that they are going to go through. Whoop. But before we do that, we want to put a nut and two washers on each one, which is the hardware that goes inside the chassis. So that'll go through, and then we'll do the same with the other wires and get them all prepped. And then while I'm doing this, I'm going to spin the amp around too so we get a better view of soldering the wires to these jacks. So the other thing you want to do is you want to put this other this cup on the outside and then cut this off and strip this and have just enough wire coming out for you to be able to you know attach the speaker jack to. If there is some excess wire, you can shove it back through this grommet inside the bell of the transformer to make things neat so you don't have to get this like crazy short so it doesn't have a mess on the inside like I said you can you can hide some of that after you've done the work and get this soldered on so the next thing we want to do is go ahead and pin the end of this wire like that so here's the post itself, and what I do to prep these is I get a Dremel tool and grind in here a little bit to get this silver or gold coating, whichever ones you're using, to get it down to the brass. Then I put a little flux on it and then heat it up and get a little puddle of solder already in this little cup so it's a lot easier to solder the wire to the end of this without having to put a ton of heat on it. And then I use this little thing that I made up which is just a couple of alligator clips onto a piece of copper wire to hold things like this in place while I solder them and then you kind of futz around with it a little bit until you get it right where you need it to be once we get the wire sitting where we want it we come back, heat this up, maybe add just a little bit of solder there, and get this good and hot until the wire is melted, until you get that puddle in the jack melted again, and the wire is really down in that puddle of solder good.
It might take applying some heat for a few seconds. And then try to hold it as still as you can as it's cooling off. So you don't get a cold solder joint. And if you do, it'll it won't be shiny. It'll look like all kind of brittle or you know almost like flat paint looks. Then we let this cool off so we don't melt this plastic. And once this cools off, I'll show you how to screw this together. And one thing you can do to help speed up the process is get a a wet rag, put it around it, and that'll help suck some of the heat out of it. So there we go with that. Then we put that on there, put it through the hole, and then we have these two plastic washers, and then we bring the nut up and screw it in place. And then, like I said, you can take this little bit of excess wire and just poke it back through the grommet and have just enough sticking out to come over to the jack, make it nice and neat. Then the last thing we do is use something like this, just a nail through this hole to keep it from twisting and come on the back side. and tighten it up with some sort of a wrench. And there we go. You don't want to get it crazy tight because remember this is plastic and you don't want to like break all that stuff. But there's the first jack mounted. Now I'm going to go ahead and mount the other three and we'll move on to the next step in the process. Okay, so you can see we have our Output transformer wires wired up to speaker jacks, which is already making this neater looking and less of a bowl of spaghetti. These we're going to have to hook up later, so we're going to just kind of put them... Eh, why don't we just tuck them over here in this corner for now like that. And then, next we're going to work on wiring up the rectifier tube. Let me zoom in a little bit here so you can see a little better. Okay, so we got these wires over here. And these wires here, they're going to come over here to our rectifier tube. And one of the things I do is I identify the pins that aren't going to be used by the rectifier tube and cut them off. So the only ones we're really going to be using are these four that are standing up straight. But in this instance, we're going to use one of these tubes as kind of a tie-off point for our first filtering capacitor. And one of the things I want to be careful of is here's the rectifier tube we're using, and here's the keyway, and here's the keyway here that's lined up with this screw. And so we'll be using this pin, this pin, this pin, this pin. There's no other pins connected. So we could pick any of these to, to use. If we look at a 5AR4 which we're not specifically going to be using, but we could use in this amp in a pinch. It's got this extra pin here that supposedly isn't connected to anything, but I still don't want to use it as a tie-off point. And so, on this case, we're going to use this pin back here in this corner as the tie-off point because it can't possibly be connected to anything. So we're going to come in here and cut these extra ones off. And just get them out of our way since we know we're not going to be using them. And if nothing else, it just visually simplifies what we're going to be doing here. So it looks like that. The next thing we're going to be doing is. We're going to connect these tubes up to the heaters, which are these two pins right here. So we want to twist these up. Now you don't want to twist up in here super tight. 
because they warn you you can twist the wires off the inside of the transformer so the grommet kind of helps you from going overboard with that but I like twisting these pretty tight and make sure that they're twisted kind of like around each other and you don't have just one wire wound around the outside of the other because that doesn't do the cancellation the noise cancellation that we want going on here so we're going to get those twisted up and get enough length to come over here I usually twist them a little more than I want because they're going to relax some the next thing is we want to get we're not going to be using any of those for now ah, see how these things just get they get a life of their own until you get them tied down so we want to twist up and make sure, like this one has a stripe. That's the center tap. We're not using that. We're using these two red wires. And they're going to come over to the rectifier tube as well. And I think we're going to hook those two up first. I kind of like coming around like that so we're kind of clear of those and we'll go down kind of go down low so we want to cut these off like this let me get my click my soldering iron on and get it warming up I'm going to bend. Actually, what I'm going to do here, too, is it's got upper and lower holes. I'm going to cut off the upper hole. Since we're going down low with the high voltage wires to the rectifier. And then it just makes those two pins a little shorter. So let's wrap that around. Actually, it's probably going to be a good idea to go ahead and tin these a little bit so we make sure we don't have any stray, stray wires. So come in here and tin these two guys a little bit. And by tinning, I mean just heating up and applying a little solder to the stranded wire so they act more like a solid wire. And then we, we got a nice twist all the way up to the socket. Yeah. Make sure we don't have like a blob of solder on here where we tinned it. Because if you do, it won't go through the hull. Here we go. Just like that. And come in and with some pliers and bend the wire around the pin. And with it with it tinned, it makes it a little again it acts, it acts more like a solid wire instead of stranded wire. And you can see by cutting these pins off, now this is down close to the chassis, and this yellow wire can go over the top of these and attach to the top holes on these back pins. Just makes it a little neater. So we come in here and solder these up. And because these are alternating current, there's no polarity or anything to worry about. So then we're going to come over here. We're kind of, you're kind of, kind of loop that up and come down to these these pins. So again, we'll snip these two off.
strip the wires back, twist them a little bit. I'm going to tin these two ends. We'll do the same thing. We'll go ahead and pre bend them a little bit where we want them to go. Maybe give it one more, one more twist there. Then get some pliers and bend these around and get them mechanically secure too. Ah, that was trying to fight me a little bit. We don't want them falling off while we're trying to solder them. Now the other thing that we've got going on is this wire from the choke is going to hook up to this pin on our rectifier, this back one, and then we're going to also have a capacitor going from here over to this pin, and then a ground wire coming from here over to our star ground point. Like I said, we're going to use this little extra terminal here, this extra pin terminal to be a tie point to attach our filtering cap sitting over right over here in this corner. But again, there's plenty of wire here off this choke to just come right over here. And then we'll figure out a neat way to lay all that out. So I'm gonna go ahead and solder these two yellow wires onto the top hole of these pins. And be careful not to put too much solder so it doesn't run down and fill up that bottom hole because we're going to be using it on this rear pin. And there we go. Now we've got our heater wires hooked up to our rectifier. Now before I get into wiring up any more of this over here, probably going to wire up our power supply socket over here in this corner and get these wires or at least most of those wires dealt with. And also run the wire that's going to go up here to the switch here in the front. So let me get that stuff all prepped up and we'll get this part of the power supply wired up. And then we'll only have just a handful of wires left that are loose. We got the heater wires, the center tap, and the choke wires to hook up and then we'll have all this back here those spaghetti of wires connected to something which to me really simplifies the build is to get all this loose stuff out of our way okay so now we're ready to wire up our power switch and our IEC connector so we've got this solid core wire and uh, held one end with my fingers and put the other one in my cordless drill. And I got the twist kind of started by hand first. And then ran the drill and twisted this up. And I like just holding it with my fingers because you really can't hold it strong enough with your fingers to over twist the wire. I used to put it like in a vise or put it in you know, some sort of a clamp, and I've learned that sometimes you can twist this so tight that it's a problem. You want about a 45 degree angle on these twists, and so, anyway, that's the way I've been doing it lately. So I've bent this up, and this is going to go down here to the switch like this, and go to those two terminals. Let me get over here and zoom in and see if you can see that better. And you can see these all... Just go just like, they'll go just like that on these, these two outer connectors. The 
This one's for normally closed. This is for normally open, which is what we want. We want it where it turns on when you push it in. And then these other two terminals on the inside and the outside are for the LED little angel eye light around it. And then we come back down here on this end. This white wire is going to go to the fused connector on the IEC. You want the switch. And see these wires are just everywhere. I'm glad I want to get some of these tied off or connected to stuff. And then this white one goes here. And then the black one's going to connect to this blue wire. So we'll have this white wire for the transformer go to the unfused size of the connector. And then let me see if I can zoom in over here. And so then on this end, we're going to have this white wire is going to connect to this top connector, which is the fused one. And then the white wire from the transformer is going to come over here and connect to the unfused one. And then the black wire will loop around and connect to the blue wire, which goes, which is coming from the switch. Then there's also, see we got a white, a black, and a gray. The gray one is for 115 volts, which we're not going to use. So we're just going to like bend it over like that and then cut it off and heat shrink it and tuck it out of the way. So let me strip the some of these leads back. Oh, the next thing too, hold on a sec. Let me turn this around so I can show you this. Okay, the other thing that we have to do is we need to connect this terminal here to ground. And so I'm going to come in here with a screwdriver and scrape off the powder coating around this hole. And then after we get the paint scraped off like that, we put our bolt on here. We put our K-nut on here. Allen nut, Allen wrench, tighten this up. And then we come in with the most hated tool on the channel, which are my little small channel locks. And tighten that nut up. And then we come in with a little solder tab like that. And what I usually do is bend it up. Like that. And then we put our second K-nut on here. And this is our safety ground. So we want to make sure that it's getting a really solid connection to the chassis. Just like that. And then we could come in here as we put our connector back in here and we're going to run a solid wire from here to this terminal bolt this down and then get to soldering the rest of this stuff together okay so now we got our little ground wire here put in place i crimped it on both ends so i got a good mechanical connection as well as when i solder it it will have a solid electrical connection so let's get the Safety chassis ground soldered in place. There's that end of it. I want you to note that the safety ground for the chassis that's connecting to the earth of your house wiring is connected as close to the socket as we can get it, and it's independent by itself, ground in the chassis. And then we're going to use this point right here, you know, scrape the paint off and stuff. That's going to be our star ground point, which is a separate connection from this and even though they are connected to the chassis it's important to have the star ground point separate from the 
chassis safety ground. And for whatever reason, I mean, I don't know if there's just a little bit of resistance between these two points, but they're being not connected together. I've never had any problem with ground loops or hum in any of my gear, and all of it's grounded the same way. And I hear people talking all the time about having problems with hum and ground loops and all that kind of stuff, and I've just never had any problems with that stuff, and I have to attribute it to using this kind of common grounding theme that I use on all my gear. So the next thing we're going to do is we've got this piece of wire again, and we're going to have this end of it come over here and connects onto this top lug, which is the fused part of this. I'm going to bend this over a little more so it's more of a hook. And I can hook it into there and then come in with the, the hated pliers. Grip that together. That. And come in here. Solder that onto there. And there we go. Then, like I said, this blue wire is going to connect to the transformer coming back from the switch. So now we're going to come now we're going to come around to this end. So now we have these two wires going to these two outer ones which are normally open so that when you push the button they close. And we're going to solder those two guys on. Here's one. And there's the other. So now we have, it's kind of hard to see, but the wires up in here, up in that corner, twisted pair, so we don't have to worry about any AC getting to the audio stuff that's over here. It's far enough away, and it's twisted wires and that kind of stuff. So the next thing we want to do is connect up the power transformer wires. Okay, like I said, this gray one we're not going to be using, so I don't want to cut it off too short. We're going to cut it off. Bend it over and slide a piece of heat shrink tubing over it, sealing it off, and come in and, and some people have like a heat gun. I just use the size of, side of my soldering iron like this to shrink heat shrink tubing. Give it a little pinch. Then we can tuck that guy underneath there out of the way. Out of sight, out of mind. So, we want to pull these guys up and connect them to here. And I think I'm going to just kind of loop them around like that. I mean, I guess I could do them probably more like that might even be better. So, I'm going to twist these up. Again, any AC... You need to make sure that you twist the wires. I learned by mistake one time not doing that on one of my preamps, and it hummed like crazy. And just twisting the wires up, it went away. So I think we can cut at least this white one off right here. And because this is stranded wire, I'm going to twist it up, and it's going to get bent over into a little hook, like that, and then I'm going to come in here and tin that.
And then the last thing we've got is gonna trim this black one off. Strip it. And I'm just gonna twist those together. Like that. Come in here with our solder. On a connection like this, I don't mind kind of adding a little extra solder like that. And then we'll get a little piece of heat shrink tubing and shrink over that, and we will be done wiring up the 110 AC of our amp. It slides over the solder joint, but it doesn't go over the two wires. Wait, there it goes. Perfect. So then we'll come in here. Over that solder joint. Get a little pinch on the end. Let me zoom in here and give you a, one last little shot of getting the AC wires done. So this is our fuse side that goes up to the switch. This is the non-fuse side that goes to the transformer. This blue wire is the one coming back from the switch, and it connects to the black wire going to the transformer. And then our safety ground goes over the chassis. So there we go. There's all our AC wiring. Well, we got part of this power supply built, and this, again, is probably going to be about a four-part video. So if you're enjoying this series and you're enjoying my channel, please subscribe. Please like the video, and we'll see you on the next installment of this simple push-build monoplot build. Have a great day!